God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. We are going to be looking at the pure religion. But we cannot get onto dealing with the matter of the pure religion without dealing with the basis of it. Without dealing with what actually makes a man to excel in a kind of work with God that God will accept. We said that if there is anything that contaminates faith, that pollutes faith, that makes faith and religion counterfeit, it is the problem of sin, the problem of that habit of life that we are not bold enough to deal with. But I would like to go ahead and look at the basis of what we call the seed of the pure religion. Pure religion has to begin somewhere. And ever before purity of life, purity of faith, the kind that God is designing to see in his church, before he can grow anywhere, the seed of it has to be cast. While we continue our study in the book of James, we are going to look at the seed, the basis that leads to pure religion. And I want to begin from that angle so that we can build on it and see the various dimensions as the Lord will lead us in the course of the week. We need to consider what is the basis, what is the seed that produces the purity of faith, the purity of religion in the hearts of men. And maybe the reason why several men are not able to stand the way God wanted them to stand is because the very gene of their faith was faulty, was not correct. So as we look at the scriptures together again, and as we look at the basis of a relationship with God that will bear the semblance of God's expectation, it is my prayer that heavens will be open towards us and that God himself will impart our lives, particularly in the name of Jesus Christ. I would like us to, for our text, read again from the book of James, chapter 1. And we're going to study from verse, you remember we stopped our discussion in verse 16, but we'll start reading from verse 17, and we can stop in verse 25. James chapter 1, from verse 17, down to verse 25. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us, with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, 
and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself, and goeth his way, and straight away forgeteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continues daring, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Let's stop there. May God bless his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, when you want to grow guinea corn and you want plenty bags of guinea corn, what do you sow? What do you sow? You sow guinea corn. But when you are intending to get rice, several sacks of rice and thinking that you are sowing rice you mistakenly sowed bene seed what are you going to get whatsoever a man soweth the bible say that is what he shall reap We want to establish very, very quickly tonight as we study that what comes out of the lives of men is a direct result of the kind of seed that have been sown into their lives. And there is no other way, there is no arbitrary way by which we can arrive or attain or practice what the word of God has referred to as the pure religion except the correct seed had been planted. Praise the Lord. Except the right seed for the right life had been planted, there is no hope of reaping a kind of life that the word of God continues to talk about unto our lives. And you will discover from the passages we are reading that God is very, very careful pointing to us that there is a seed that produces the kind of life that God is looking for. And except we give attention to that seed and relate with that seed properly, our lives will only be struggling to attain at the kind of Christian relationship with God or religion that is acceptable before God. Except each one of us, we will give attention to the seed that produces godliness. The seed that produces love. The seed that produces purity. Except we will embrace the seed that can produce the kind of life of Christ within us. Every effort we make, everything we try to arrive at a life that is acceptable before God, it will not work out. It will not work out. It will not produce. The seed that produces the kind of life that God is looking for, we have to consider it and give it the pride of place and give it the correct attention it deserves before we can begin to see the pure religion in our own lives. If it is not just going to be a mere effort of man. And so, 
what we will be doing is first of all to study the seed that produces the kind of life that God is looking for. It is very, very important for us to be sure that the seed that can produce what we are looking for is planted. Otherwise, in vain, shall we wait to see the result of a Christian life. In vain, shall we be talking and say, look, as a Christian, you are supposed to do this, you are supposed to go here, you are supposed to do that. It will not work. Because the seed that produces such a character had not yet been cast. Or where it had been cast, where it had been planted, it has not been properly nurtured. It has not been properly uh, tended in order to produce uh, according to the will and purposes of God. Praise the Lord. Now, we are going to check some few scriptures along with what we are reading in James before we can return back to settle at the book of James itself. Now, you will notice from chapter 1 verse 17 that we began to read it said, after he had finished dealing with the fact of the problem of sin, he ended that one in verse 16 he said, my dear brothers, make no mistake about this. But every good gift and every perfect gift always comes from where? From above. And cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now look at verse 18. He said, Of his own will begat he us. With what? With what? With the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. There are two serious issues in verse 18. But we are going to take them one after the other. We are going to study them one after the other. Because if we get a good grip of God's purpose for our lives in that verse 18, it begins to become a key unto the kind of religion that God is expecting from our lives. But the first thing we want to study in that verse 18, the Bible says, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. I want us to read that from good news. Who is having good news? Can you just read verse 18 for us? It is the word of truth that can make our lives to be transformed and be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ such that when you look into our lives, the kind of religion we will practice will be a religion that has been formed, fashioned, arranged by the word of truth. Hallelujah. So we can't be talking about the pure religion until we first of all look at our attitude, our relationship, our response unto God's word, which is the seed for the kingdom life. And when the word of God has not been properly related with or handled in any man's life, the laxity, the emptiness, and the vagueness of that kind of life will become apparent. No matter how you cover it with church activity, it will still show up. 
It is not activity that is the problem. It is the seed that was not properly planted, or it has not been properly handled, or it is not allowed to grow and shoot forth the way it should. And so, whensoever any man is eager to become more and more conformed to the standard of God's will, and to live a life that pleases God, <clears throat> and to live a life that is victorious, to live a life that portrays Jesus Christ, the only place to go, the only place to return to, is still the word of truth. Because it is the word of truth by which we were brought into life. Now, when you turn to 1 Peter, let's check 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, verse 23, up to verse 25. Obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, being born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abides forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. Hallelujah. When you look at verse 22, he said, See ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. The only way by which a man's soul can be purified the only way by which a man can be sanctified from all filthiness, from all contamination of sin, is by what? Is by what? Is by obeying the truth, which is the word of God. You remember the Lord Jesus Christ said in John chapter 17 and verse 17, can someone please help us read John 17, 17? Sanctify them through thy truth. Yes. Thy word is truth. Praise the Lord. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What does that mean? The only thing that can keep a man's heart pure. The only thing that can keep a man sanctified, which is the basis of purity of religion. The only thing that can purify the soul of a man is the truth, the word of truth, the word of God. If you have a husband that is very, very callous. Do you know the whole truth of the matter? It is not your fighting him that will change him. Even if you report him to his father, his father had no power to help his life out. There is only one thing that changes a callous man unto a loving man. What is that thing? The word of God. The word of truth. So when you want a man's religion to be pure, to be sincere, and to be acceptable unto God, there's no other way to arrive at such a serious expectation except by the word of truth. Even the Lord Jesus Christ said, sanctify them 
through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In John chapter 15 verse 3, the Lord Jesus again was talking to his disciples. Do you know what he said? He said, you are clean because I washed you with uh, soap. Why? By the word which I have spoken unto you. So ye have become clean by the word that I have spoken unto you. Are you understanding me gradually? That what sanctifies a church, what sanctifies a man, what sanctifies a woman, and what subdues an arrogant fellow, what will make our young people to become very, very sober and very obedient is the word of truth. And the Bible said, and this is the word which by the gospel has been preached unto you. Do you remember what Psalm says? Psalm 119 verse 9 and verse 11. What did he say? He said, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? Excuse me, how? How? He said, by taking heed according to thy word. The only way by which a man can live and live well and live above sin is by taking heed unto the word of truth, the word of God. And he said, thy word have I heed in my heart. That I might not do what? I might not sin against you. Hallelujah. When Joshua was to take over from Moses, God said to him, he said, and the book of the law shall not do what? Shall not depart from your mouth. Thou shalt meditate during day and night. And thou mayest observe to do according to what is written therein. In so doing, you will do what? You will make your way prosperous and you will have a good success. Brothers, the only way by which a man, and that's the first thing I'm laying as a foundation, as a basis for attaining a pure religion, is by the word of truth. It is the word of truth at work on the heart of a man that will make him tender and make him compassionate and we want to make him share with those that are suffering and those that are in need. Only the word of God can do that. When you go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, let's check 2 Timothy chapter 3. All these are peripheral passages that shows to us that we cannot expect to reap the life of Jesus Christ without sowing the seed of the word of God. Just as you cannot get rice on a field where you planted guinea corn. So also it is impossible to see the life of Jesus manifest and develop and dominate our lives, our destiny, and our churches except the seed, which is the word of truth, have been duly planted, duly watered, and duly nurtured, allowed to germinate, allowed to operate. Once I'm able to establish this fact, we will now go on to now focus on that seed, the word of God. How can he help us to produce the kind of pure religion that God will be at home with? Hallelujah. This has been Living Seed. 
For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-036359, 0703-768118. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Make it a date with us next week.